Hey everyone, I hope everything is going well with you. So I will start by welcoming everyone that this is their first video on my channel and if you will enjoy the content here, it will mean a lot to me if you hit the thumbs up button on that video and I'd appreciate your feedback on my videos as well. And just a quick message to everyone, lately I am trying to be more consistent on Instagram by uploading live videos where I share Python related tips so you can definitely join those live sessions to extend your Python skills and ask me questions there as well. Alright, so today's focus is going to be on magic methods with Python. Now in this video especially we are going to understand the differences between the Dunder STR versus the Dunder REPR. Now, if you never heard me saying Dunder before, basically this is a shortened way to say double underscore. So besides double underscore, I might say Dunder throughout this video. And those magic methods are what I am going to try to explain you today. Now, let's give a short explanation for those that they didn't heard about the magic methods. Basically, the magic methods in Python are some methods that are going to be extensible from each Python object and they are going to perform some action in the Python object that you are working with or return you some useful information back when you apply those magic methods on some special Python object. Okay, so I will start by explaining what the Dunder STR method does and then later on we will move to differences between the Dunder STR to Dunder REPR. So before we actually go ahead, let's give a quick example how we can see what Dunder STR does. So let's try to create a variable here like a equals to one and try to print this variable as string. So we can basically go here and apply conversion to that variable and print it. So if I'm going ahead and print this, then we can see that this is still one, but it is converted into a string. So I could basically go here and write something like that. And then the result of that will be 111. Now, what is so beautiful about the Dunder STR in your own classes, you can basically decide what will happen if you convert your own object to strings because this is why the Dunder STR method is designed for. So you can basically override the behavior of your objects when you convert them to strings. So let's go ahead and do that. So I will exit my terminal here and delete everything from here and create a class that is going to be named customized integers. So actually there is a reason that I'm calling this function as it is because we are going to receive a number here and we are going to try to write our own action when we convert the object of this class to a string. So before we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and try to receive one variable when we create objects of this class. So let's receive here a num or maybe integer. This will be better. And then self.integer equals to integer. Now let's exit our class here and create int1 equals to customized integer. And basically I will pass in here four. And now if I was to go ahead and print int1 here, Actually, let's before try to print this one. So I will try to convert this object to string. And if we print this, then we should see the following result because we quite don't do anything with that Dunder STR method yet in our class. So let's go ahead and give a little bit customization to our class here. So I will basically try to override the magic method Dunder STR and I will try to return different result when we convert this object to string. So let's write here Dunder STR and it will receive the self as a parameter and we will return customized integer like that. Okay, so let's actually add a formatted string here and try to add here self.integer so we can understand which customized integer I'm talking about. So now if I'm going to execute the program again, then the result is not going to be that one. Besides, we are applying our own functionality. What happens when we convert our object to strings? So if I am executing that program, you can see the result of customized integer 
4. Now it actually doesn't matter if we try to convert this to string, so it makes sense to delete that from here because by default the print built-in function is going to try to represent the object that you are printing in string anyway. So if I'm printing this again like that, then we will receive the same result. So it is okay to leave it like that. Okay, so now that we understand how the Dunder STR works and how it can help you to write better classes, let's actually change this to REPR besides STR. So I will basically write here REPR and execute our program. Now, the result that we are going to receive might surprise you because if I'm executing that program, then we are receiving still the same result. Now, we might have expected to see the result where we saw a large amount of numbers and basically a lot of characters that is pointing to that specific object, but the result is still customized integer 4. So, even though we did not change our Dunder STR, we still see what the Dunder REPR tries to return. So the question here is why do we see that? And the reason for that is because the print built-in function looks for a pretty way to show you the object that you are trying to print for yourself. So it tries to search for the Dunder STR first and it tries to see what value is returned there and it could not find anything there because we did not define the Dunder STR and so it went to check if there is anything else that is inside the Dunder REPR in that customized class and it found the REPR over here. So this is why this was the result when we try to print this object. So although we understood how the print function works with the Dunder STR versus the REPR, we might have still have a tough time to understand the actual differences between those. Now, when we talking about the REPR method, it is meant to be unambiguous. And what I mean by this is that you as a developer of that class supposed to understand what class you used when you try to access this object. Okay, so currently I'm inside the Python official documentation. And even if we look up for the Dunder REPR method in here, we can definitely see that we should return a string that is going to be a valid Python code that will allow us to recreate the object that we have just created. So what that means, it means that if I open my PyCharm back, we can see that the explanation tells us that we should return this exact string to allow developers to recreate this object if it is possible. So let's go ahead and customize this in the best practice way that the Python documentation explains us. So we have to close this space in here and we also have to open this parentheses besides the space and we should copy the self.integer in here because this is how we implemented this exact object and this is how the rest of the objects are going to be implemented. And now if I go ahead and execute that program, then we can see a formal result of what this object was about. And we can also see that this is equal to this. So this is what is considered as a best practice when it comes to Dunder REPR. So although we customized the Dunder REPR in the way that it should be, we still did not customize our Dunder STR method to be more pretty. So if I will open the Python documentation one more time and scroll down to what Dunder STR is supposed to return, we can really understand that the string that we should return is supposed to be prettier and nicer to the user that reads it. So it makes sense to go to our PyCharm and write a code like the following for example. So let's go ahead here and recreate our Dunder STR method and we will receive self as a parameter. And specifically for that example, what I'm going to do here is check if the received integer is actually 4 and if it is, then I am going to basically return 4 as a string. So it quite makes sense because we want to display the customized integer in a nicer way so the user can understand. But since we are only showing some examples, then I'm not going to write a complex algorithm that will return the string version of all integers. We will basically stick with 4. 
And if I go ahead and re-execute that program, then we should see the result of 4 because this is how the print built-in function prioritizes the dunder str method over the dunder repr method. Now, before we close up this video, I also want to show you the exact same behavior in the Python shell. So let's go ahead and open the Python shell. Okay, so I just changed the display a little bit here. So on the right pane, we have the Python shell and I just loaded the code of the class that we wrote in that episode into Python shell. So the code in this class here is the same as what is going on here. So if I will go ahead and create a new instance of customized integer, then we should be fine. So let's go ahead and do that. So I will type in here int1 equals to customized integer and I will pass in here 4 again and okay so I think I have added an extra space here so let's go ahead and do that again. This is why we saw that error. So let's write in here the exact same thing without any spaces before that line and then we should be fine. Now just to clean up the screen here, I will run in the command to cleaning the screen here so we can have a better look. Now if I'm going ahead and trying to print the string version of the int1 variable, then we should receive 4. But as you know, in Python shell, we can directly refer to our variables and this will allow us to receive their values. Well, when you are doing that in the Python shell, you will receive the REPR version of that object or whatever you are working with. So if I'm directly going and writing here int1 and press enter, then you can see that we receive the REPR method of that object. So this is something that I also wanted to show you because sometimes when you go ahead and create variables in Python shell and then you print it, you quite don't understand why in that case, for example, we see only one without single quotes. But if I was to turn this to string like that, then you can see a huge difference between those outputs. So this is the actual difference, okay? When you directly refer to an object, when you use Python shell, you should receive the REPR method, which is supposed to be the formal way of that object. But when you are turning it to a string or printing it, it's supposed to return you a string that is going to look prettier, nicer, and more understandable. And one more thing here that you probably have noticed, the REPR string that we are returning is a valid Python code. So if I was to grab that line and paste it in inside our Python shell, then you can see that it returns us a response, but that means actually that it is a Python code that is valid. So we could also go with something like int2 equals to that and print in int2 again and receive the same response because this is a valid Python code. So this is how we should return our our EPR strings. Okay, so I hope this video was well explanation about the differences between those. Just remember that those Dunder methods are doing the same job, but their goals are quite different and you should understand that as a Python developer as well. And if you have any questions or confusions about this, please consider commenting them out and I will for sure respond to you. Okay, so if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my future uploads.